All right, good morning and thank you for joining us today. I'm here to provide all of you with information about a recent operation called Shining Light. This four day sting operation started on August 2nd and ended on August 6th with the primary goal being the identification and arrest of individuals who were using the internet to sexually exploit children. This crucial effort led by the Clay County Sheriff's Office was supported by several law enforcement partners, including Homeland Security Investigations, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the State Attorney's Office for the Fourth Judicial Circuit, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, the Orange Park Police Department, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. Additionally, the Intercept Task Force and Operation Lightshine participated in this operation and played a pivotal role. During Operation Shining Light, investigators and agents went undercover as children online to uncover and capture individuals involved in child sexual exploitation. During the operation, they successfully identified several suspects who were engaged in these activities. Once the operation concluded, investigators needed to gather some more evidence, some of which required search warrants to ensure that these suspects could be prosecuted and held accountable. This complex process involved a thorough investigation and collaboration between law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal levels across the country. As a result of these efforts, 10 individuals have been arrested for attempting to sexually exploit minors. I'm gonna share with you their names and photos now. Brandon, Brian Brandon Martinez. Uh, he is 19 years old. He is from the Crescent City, uh, Florida area. And he is charged with uh, soliciting acts from a child who he believed to be 14 years of age. He is officially charged with the following. Soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices. Unlawful use of a two-way communications device traveling to meet a minor to commit an unlawful sexual act. His bond is $450,000. Next up, Luke Joshua Parrish. He is 30 years old. He uh, solicited acts from two of our undercover chatters who he believed to be 14 years old and 13 years old. Parrish is charged with the following soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices through a parent, custodian, or legal guardian, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, and traveling to meet a minor to commit an unlawful sex act. His bond is $600,012. Scott Christopher Smith, 39 years old from the Jacksonville area. He, he attempted to solicit sexual acts from a child he believed to be 13 years of age. He is charged with the following, soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, traveling to meet a minor to commit unlawful sexual activity. His bond, $300,009. Datavius McDuffie, he is 26 years old. He is from the Rhine, Georgia area. He attempted to solicit sexual acts from a child he believed to be 14 years of age. He is charged with the following, soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, traveling to meet a minor to commit unlawful sexual acts, his bond, $300,009. Mark Jubin, 27 years old, from the Jacksonville area. He attempted to solicit sexual acts from a child he believed to be 14 years of age. He is charged with the following, soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, traveling to meet a minor to commit unlawful sexual acts, 
His bond, $350,009. Eric Jimenez, 38 years old, from the Jacksonville area, attempted to solicit sexual acts from a person he believed to be 14 years of age, a child who he believed to be 14 years of age. He is charged with soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, and traveling to meet a minor to commit an unlawful sexual act. His bond, $450,009. Next up is Reginald Jefferson, Jr. He is 29 years old and from the Jacksonville area. He attempted to solicit sexual acts from a child he believed to be 14 years of age. He is charged with the following, soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct using computer services or devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, and traveling to meet a minor to commit unlawful sexual acts, and fleeing and eluding police. His bond, $400,012. I'm going to go through the last uh, three suspects that were arrested. Um, their pictures are not available at this time. Sean Burge, white male, 49 years old, from the Tallahassee area. Uh, he is, uh, was arrested by our Tallahassee partners um, with assistance from the FBI. He is federally charged federally charged with the following crimes, online enticement of a minor to engage in sexual activity and distribution of child pornography. Jason Nicholas, 53 years old, from Ramona, California. Uh, he was arrested by California authorities, again with the assistance of the FBI, and he's federally charged with distribution of sexual abuse materials. Jose Gonzalez, Jr., 33 years old from the Georgia area. He was arrested in Gainesville, Georgia by our partners with the FBI. He is federally charged with five counts of distribution of child sexual abuse materials. I want to emphasize that my top priorities are safeguarding our children from harm and holding perpetrators accountable for their actions. This operation further highlights the ongoing battle against child online exploitation and human trafficking. It is crucial for parents and guardians to monitor their children's online activities, have conversations with them about suspicious behavior online or encounters that they may be having, and please report any of these cases, any of these suspicious activities to law enforcement. We must continue to work together as a community to create a safer online environment for our children. And with that being said, I'll open it up to any questions. What are some of the logistical challenges between working with all the different agencies? That's a great question because as you can see, we had local, state, and federal partners, not only in the, from the region, but from across the country. That requires a lot of uh, effort um, by our detective team, uh, some of which are standing here behind me, some of which are out behind you. Uh, just incredible um, work, effort, partnership, uh, patience, and really, you know, making sure that the, the charges, um, that the operation was not only seamless, but that the charges would stick. And so that is why there was a, a time delay between August uh, when the chat op occurred and now, is because we wanted to make sure that we had done everything to the fullest extent possible and that we had done it right. So our, uh, our chatters pretended to be 13 and 14 year old uh, children. Can you talk about the partnerships? About how, how, how well do they work? I, I, no, well, we are so fortunate in Northeast Florida to have amazing partnerships with both our local, state, and federal partners. Uh, and an example of that is the, the outcome of this operation. Also, the, the partnership is even highlighted further with our Intercept Task Force, which is the seven, diff seven different law enforcement agencies who work together on, every, you know, on doing these kinds of operations regularly. Uh, you know, uh, we are very fortunate, but it's also something that we, we strive, we work towards every single day. Communication, cooperation, partnership, working together to keep this part of Florida safe.
Let me, let me tell you something. Every single day, every single day, we're working to get online child predators off the street. And to be able to highlight 10 of the most recent, um, there's no telling how many victims we saved, how many victims we prevented uh, by, by getting these 10 men off the street. Yeah, so the question is, is it alarming that we caught 10 people in four days? It's sad. It's alarming. It's sad. It's scary. Uh, but I think it shows you, Don, the, the amount of this activity that's going on out there. And any parent who says, well, not my child, um, they know better, not my child, um, they would never fall for that. Uh, I tell you, every single day, kids are being solicited online. Every single day, kids are being stalked and attempted to be exploited online. And we as parents have to intervene and have to maintain oversight as to what our kids are doing online, not only with their phones, but their gaming stations, all of that. Parents have to be involved. And you have to have conversations with your kids now, constantly conversations with your kids about who are you talking to? What are you talking about? Do you know this person? Where is this person from? You know, even my own children. Who are you know? They're, they're older teenagers. Who are you talking to? You know, do you know that person? Where does that person live? Where does that person go to school? And make sure that the relationships that your children are having online are healthy relationships, and it's not somebody out there trying to exploit them and hurt them. Not to my knowledge. No. 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 Sure, the chat op, the actual operation, I'm gonna pull the dates out so I can get it, make sure I get it right. Um, yeah, the chat op was August 2nd through the 6th. That is when we set up operation, uh, put uh, law enforcement chatters online and began talking to uh, people that, we, um, that were out trying to exploit children. So we wrapped up the physical operation on the 6th, but the investigation continued through uh, interviews, subpoenas, search warrants, uh, so that it, all the cases could be wrapped up and solid before we came forward with the, the names and the information. Right. Your job is to be a parent, not your kid's friend. And, um, you know, again, I, I have three teenagers myself living at home, and those conversations are difficult, but I'd much rather have a difficult conversation than a child who's been victimized. And, um, you know, if anybody needs any help on how to start those conversations with, their, with, with kids, let us know, um, because we can help you with that. It is difficult. It's, it's embarrassing. It's uncomfortable. Uh, and, you know, the kids get all upset. I can't believe you're saying that stuff to me, Mom, you know. Uh, but you know what? That's your job. Your job as a parent is to protect your children. And unfortunately, in today's technology age, suspects, people who, who want to hurt your kids, are accessing them through social media uh, and, and through any, any ac uh, device that has Internet access. So many times they will, um, you know, they'll, 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 they'll just bait the water. They'll send out, oh, you look, I saw your profile picture. You look so pretty or you sound so cute. How old are you? Um, you know, I really like you. I love you. Uh, you know, it's interesting because we talk a lot about, there's a lot of conversation about human trafficking. And I would tell you, especially in the Clay County area, human trafficking starts out with just a, an older man talking to a younger person, telling them how special they are. And, and the kids, you know, believe it, they fall for it. They want to feel loved and needed. And parents have to be the, 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 the person in between the suspect and their child saying that this is not real. What this person is telling you is not real. They're trying to take advantage of you. Were there any like, platforms you saw higher kind of engagement rates than others? 
I, I think we'd probably decline to answer that right now just due to operationally. Um, you know, these, these guys behind me are, are phenomenal at what they do, and, and part of what makes them good is being on the cutting edge of what platforms are being used um, so that uh, we can continue to go out there and, and, and try to capture these folks that are exploiting, trying to exploit our children. One more question. One more question. Did, did this start out as a Clay County and, and, and it evolved as, as the net got bigger, bigger, or were all of you in it from the start? Everybody was in it from the start, except for the out-of-state partners, which we had to, once we realized we had out-of-state suspects, um, that's where help with uh, the FBI came in to, to uh, get those folks into custody. Um, but uh, this was really a regional approach, going back to the Intercept Task Force concept, which is, uh, you know, uh, the, the partners from all these law enforcement agencies coming together. We were the lead agency in this, and, um, but all the partners coming together to support each other. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys.